Hey everyone! What's up? <laughs> when do I ever say what's up? <laughs> what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I am doing some more itch.io um, and now we're out of just playing the kind of like games that I was doing before and we're into doing like specific like games now. So I'm doing the series of The Night Fisherman, The Outcast Lovers and The Change Architect which are all part of the same series and they're all apparently like 10 minutes long. Tense thought provoking encounter, uh, a chance encounter for a couple and a choice driven protest simulator. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, my washing machine is on downstairs uh, and it's loud enough that I can hear it so I apologise if you can hear it but yeah. Um, also pretty soon I'm going to be doing the phone games. I've also downloaded some new games that I want to go through um, up here so uh, stay tuned. I'm excited. I'm, I'm really enjoying doing these games. It's super fun. Uh, even if they have been giving my computer some real problems but you know you love you, these are the, the things you have to do when you're a content creator you know you have to make sacrifices for your art. Anyway let's play the night freshman. Hopefully these run or this is going to be really embarrassing. But my Norton's telling me that there's no viruses in any of the games I downloaded. So, we're hoping for the best. I have no idea if I have my computer sound on. <laughs> A short by default and charred. Sound by Richard Campbell. The Night Fisherman. I'm the Night Fisherman. Oh, we have sound. Okay. You are a night fisherman. What am I doing? Clicking. You spot a boat in the distance. I really like the colour palette here. It's really pretty. That is, like, that there is a fucking bisexual sky if I've ever seen one. After stowing your flashlight, you reach over the side of the boat and collect a pan full of water. Oh, fuck. I missed that one. You pick up your rod, rod and open your bait pouch. Hook a live maggot or toss the boiled bait in the water. Um, that breathing is creepy. Toss. You let the maggots be. Instead, you toss a handful of smelly boiled bait into the sea and cast your line. So is this me, the guy with the red? Yeah, the man in the other boat has a thin strap across his body. Arrow keys, what? On his back, you can see the protruding stock of a shotgun. Is this Chris Redfield? Oh, I can change the perspective. Oh, cute, okay. Churchill. Hello, sir. I'm Churchill with the EPG. Hello. I'm checking in with all the vessels in the area. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind lending me a lighter. Mine must have gone overboard. He's very, um, polite. Of uh, I, of course. He tossed the lighter to the other board. Thank you, sir. You are Mr. Gardner, are you not? That'll be me. I can just hear him with, like, a right sailor accent. The other man likes a cigarette, then pockets your lighter. You steal a glance around your boat. And you know who I am? What I do? I do. Then please tell me, what is it that I do? You find immigrants. You consider for a moment as Churchill's eyes fix on you. You're part of the English Protection Group. You stop smugglers from bringing immigrants into England. Bingo! That's the job Mr. F has given us indeed. It's my duty to sail about, checking every boat out there, checking the caves. Our leader doesn't want any immigrants slipping through the net. Let's change the perspective. Here we go. It's good speaking to you, Mr. Churchill, but how am I able to help? Ah, I'm sure you can. I'm told that you're an upstanding man, Mr. Gardner. But perhaps you can help me another way. You must hear gossip, perhaps from Mrs. Gardner. Have you heard anything about the smugglers? Ah, you reach down, grab a tin of cheap shandy base beer. I heard... They moved further north. Just a rumour, mind you, but they moved north. 
Apparently there's better caves near the next estuary anyway, so they let their French counterparts know to make a slightly longer journey. Ah, a shame. Perhaps they outfoxed us this time. The man sighs into his cigarette as you drink your watery lager. Oh! I have a stowaway in my boat! Ooh! Well, in that case, there's nothing more for me to do here. My work is done. Sorry to have troubled you. Not at all. A welcome distraction. Churchill drops his shoulders. He's at ease now. His threatening presence is dissipating. Churchill turns his hand to his boat, readying himself to leave. Catch anything? Caught anything tonight? Not much luck tonight, no. Not me. You know what they- nor me. You know what they call me in the lefty papers. <laughs> lefty. He hovers for your answer. Um, I'm gonna say I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention to things like that. No, of course, but you've heard it surely. You know of the name. Aye. Then please, what is it? The dark mass of sweat in your brow. The Kid Fisher. You're apprehensive, unsure how he'll react. They call you the Kid Fisher. Yes, a name I've well earned. He focuses on you again now, no longer leaving. They call me this because I'm the best at fishing immigrants out of this channel before they reach shore, and because they say I cast them back out to water. It's not a perfect metaphor. Here's a better one. The animal that best embodies the character of the Englishman is naturally the lion. We are proud, stubborn, often uninterested in menial labour, but so powerful that others will do it for us. So most of the EPG will hunt in places which could hide a lion. They check sturdy shipping containers and yachts. But illegal immigrants are pigeons, not lions. They swarm in great number, attracted to urban places, risk anywhere they can, and most importantly, we don't like them. Now pigeons are really no different than the beloved Jay. But we malign the pigeon and consider them dirty, vermin. It's difficult to be a pigeon. I feed the pigeons in my garden every day, so shut up. Mr. Gardener, I'm the best at catching them because I know what tremendous feats human beings are capable of once they abandon dignity. You listen in silence. Ah, anyway, I assume you won't mind if I enjoy a tipple. Go ahead. The other man pulls an elegant bottle out of his jacket pocket. The blue glass is artfully blown to appear as if thorny rose stems are wrapped around it. The bottle is capped with a cast metal stopper in the shape of a rose. He removes it and drinks from the bottle. Sapphire rose, there's no better scotch. I... Shh. I am going to have to inspect your boat, but when people cooperate with me they are not punished. Oh no! In fact, they are given safe passage home to their loved ones and no charges are brought. Do you understand? I... The kid fisher's face becomes deadly serious. You're transporting an illegal immigrant, aren't you? You consider for a second, and that very consideration gives you away. There's nothing for it now. Oh no, the music! Aye. They're hiding underneath that tarpaulin behind you, aren't they? Tears mixed with the sea spray and sweat, dipping into the boat. Aye. I will now throw you a line. Move far away from the tarpaulin and get ready to swim. The rope attached to the larger vessel lands at the fore of the boat, away from the tarp. Well, we're going to protect the boy. You kneel by the tarp. Take the boy's hand in, his, in your own. His confused eyes cut at you. I'm sorry, lad. Churchill takes another sip of the sapphire rose, stoppers it and places it back inside his coat. Such a shame, Mr. Gardner. You could have taken the rope and been dropped safely home. I'll send my regards to your wife. Oh my god. Rule Britannia. The fisherman's boat flips, the hull partly shattered. For a few seconds, Churchill wa fuck, watches the water or something something. The boy resurfaces, gasping air misted with the fisherman's blood. Churchill lines up his final shot. And then relaxes the gun with an ecstatic grin. Laughing, he turns to his vessel and readies it to sail on. I hope we meet again. Goodbye, little one. Watching the boat leave, the boy begins weakly to swim. Would you like to save your decisions from the night fisherman? This will affect story in the other sacrifices series and replace any previous save file. Yes. Wow. Well, that was dark. I don't know which one comes next, then. I'll need to check. But, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way out of that one. I don't know. We could replay it again and find out, but I'll play the other ones and see what happens. Other games in the series, The Outcast Lovers. That probably means The Outcast Lovers is the next one then, and I think that's right. Well! 
That was dark. Okay. Time for the outcast lovers then, I guess. So this one's yellow. Yellow's my favorite color. So that should be good. Is this the kid? Is this the kid from the Night Fisherman? Oh my god, that music is so creepy. Mary, you're speeding. Shit. Oh, did you hear about Liv's uncle? Stupid bastard was drunk cycling again at high speed. What's the story? So he swerves off his bike. He swerves his bike off Promenade Hill for some reason. Hits the seawall dead on. He's flung over the handlebars right into the high tide. Oh shit. Yep, flew straight in, knocked his head on a rock, almost drowned. Damn, is he alright? He was. When he got to the hospital on the mainland, they checked his records. Turns out he was German. No visa. Doctors called immigration, but the EPG got him first. Now he's gone. No. Hippocratic Oath. More like Hippocrat Oath. Ola, look out. Holy fuck. No spinal trauma, I think. Oh god, why was he on the road? Help me get him into the fucking car, Ola. Yeah, Ola. Fuck's sake. Immigrants flee UK by Ola Cook. Kugoana. I'm starving. Why hasn't anyone worked the fields? Beats me. Island Channel Echo. Local hero doctor returns. You are Ola, a retired cartoonist. You watch the boy set down his knife and fork, the plate in front of him emptied. He draws his arms back inside the blanket given to him by Mary, your partner. He takes a few, few glances around your cluttered home, then seems to lose focus, staring idly forward, lost in thoughts. You feel terrible about hitting him with your car! Yeah, you probably should do that! Mary, what are you thinking? You sigh. I should have been paying attention. But it seems like he was in a bad way even before we hit him. I hope we can help. Mary gives you a soft, compassionate look. It's okay, babe. We only gave him a few contusions, a glancing bump. It's the hypothermia that's the real problem. Well, that and the fact that he might be concussed. That's true. He must have fallen out of one of the smuggler's boats. He's lucky I'm a doctor. Hypothermia is easy to miss. Kid, drink your tea. The boy doesn't respond. Ola, do something. The concussion. He's got to stay awake. He looks blankly at you. You lean in towards him. Um, communicate with gestures. You point at the boy's mug, then pick up your own. Yours is empty, but you grab it with both hands and pantomime drinking from it. The boy is bemused as you glug away at thin air. What the hell are you doing? He's not an alien. He knows how drinking works. You put your mug down and smack your lips with satisfaction. Next, you move the boy's mug closer to him, repeatedly pointing between his mouth and the mug. 
The boy smiles for the first time, amused by the ridiculous show before him. Well, at least I tried. Embarrassed, you turn back to Mary. You hear a slurp beside you. The boy is nonchalantly drinking his tea, which Mary finds quite comical. After a moment's pause, you decide to keep the light mood rolling. So picture this. You're at a bar, and in walks an EPG member, a politician, a... Oh my fucking Christ, don't bring those racist bastards up. We're already having enough of a hard time this evening. It's insane that they even factor into this shit. The English Protection Group are violent vigilantes, not an official national force. How are they tolerated? It makes no sense. The immigration enforcement just allow it. They allow dickhead armed thugs to do their job for them. Then whatever leftover migrants the EPG passes them, they just take into custody. Fucking half a job. And even then, I read the other day that they're just held in immigration enforcement facilities for god knows how long until they decide to deport them. Half of them don't even end up in the right country. Mary looks at the boy. If he went into their care now, he'd not come out until they deem him an adult, at which point they'd ship him off into fucking whatever. How did it get to this? Mary falls quiet, having run out of steam. I was just trying to tell a joke, man. Sheesh. You both laugh and the tension dissipates. Look at the way that Mary laughs. You check on the boy. He seems oddly unfazed by Mary's diatribe. I'm sorry, love. Go on then. Tell your joke. Don't feel like it now. No, come on. I'm sorry. Please. The moments pass. Ola. Fine. Tell a joke at the bar. So in a bar, in walks an EPG shitbag, a politician, and a man who's been kicked in the head by a horse. The barkeep says, On your own today, Prime Minister. You both giggle much like a younger like much younger women, and surprisingly the boy is also laughing. That's it, on your own, Mr. Prime Minister. Does he understand? The boy's laughter fades away, and yours follows. Can you understand this little guy? Not if you understand. His gaze returns to his lap, unresponsive again. <sighs> what are we gonna do with him? I don't know. He walked straight out into the ocean into the middle of the night with no English, a handful of European coins in his pocket and no one else around. I'm pretty sure we're right to avoid the hospital and the EPG. Yeah, but we should take him to the police. It's not as if the kid's going to press charges for a fender bender. You and me are all clear. The facilities aren't so bad. They keep him safe from the EPG once he's in the system. For now, he'd be there a long while and who knows what nut job we'll have in office next. Well, yeah, assuming nothing too drastic changes, he'd be safe though. Behind bars. This isn't like you, Mary. Where's the woman who thinks doctors who ring immigration are hypocrites? This is a child, Ola. He's too fragile to go his own way. If we take him directly to the police, we can at least make sure he's provided for and safe. What other choice do we have? Look online for strangers who might take him in? Ola gestures around the room. He might like to stay here. The boy shrinks a little as both of you eye him. Ola, be serious. We don't know jack shit about kids. We made that choice 20 years ago. It's not like we can ask him, and we need to decide this as soon as possible for we're guilty of hiding a migrant. He'd be in constant danger from the APG here. It's not like we get visitors. We live in the furthest arse end of nowhere and we're already outcasts. This is a huge commitment you're talking about. There's a system in place for people like him to be looked after, fed, protected. Listen to yourself, the system. The system would have him in a fluorescent lit prison with 50 other kids for years. Well, this is a child. It's years of our life, a total overhaul of our day-to-day. -day. We're getting old. We'd be with real people, not social workers, have a family even if not his own, or at least stay free in case his real one shows up. In constant danger of being discovered and going to that fluorescent lit room anyway, or worse, but with the two of us now in jail. You look at the boy. He looks so small and a little fearful. Your raised voices seem to put him on edge. Oh no! I don't know what to say. Wait, who are they out the window? Mary, I'm begging. Handing him in is wrong. Think of the difference we can make. Don't let him grow up locked away. Mary considers for a moment, then sighs. You're right. I just, I never wanted to be a parent. Can we at least agree we'll try to find him somewhere else better suited for him to live permanently? I'm sure there's a charity somewhere. People whose life work this, people whose life work this stuff is who'd take him in. Okay, we can try that, but if that fails, no turning back. Mary looks at the boy and she gives in. You shouldn't grow up behind bars. Okay, we're doing this. We'll try to find somewhere better though. Agreed, we'll try. The house suddenly feels as if it was somehow heavier with the weight of your decision. The boy lets out a whimper. His hands go to his temples. You lean towards him. What's wrong, little guy? Did you hear? You're going to stay here for a while. 
He raises his chin. He has his eyes closed and his face looks pained as if he might start crying. He rubs at his head. I think he has a headache. The concussion? Don't let him go to sleep. Time for some bedtime music. Oh god, I suppose he has to get used to it sooner or later. You love it. I absolutely do not. Stunned by a knock at the door, you turn the music down. I told you there was people outside! A voice comes through the door. Open up, this is immigration enforcement. We're searching the area and we'd like to speak with you. Mary shit, how did they get here so fast? Fuck, we gotta hide them. Open up. Go, go, go. Where? Uh, uh, uh. Out the back door. Back door, maybe run them down to the gyms? What if they send someone around the back? Just go. You stand and watch the door as Mary bundles the boy in her arms and runs out the back door. You stop the music. One second, officer. You take a moment to steal yourself. Tell yourself you're doing the right thing. You exhale and open the door to see three men in black uniforms. Good evening, officers. Did you say something about illegals? The officers enter the property. They're polite. They ask if you've seen anything unusual. What rumours you've heard about smuggling in the area. When all's done, they walk back up the path to the main road. You hear the slam of van doors. Once you're sure they're gone, you fetch Mary and the boy from the dunes. The outside world does not hear of the boy again for six years. Okay. Okay. Yeah, save. Alright, so the boy is now living with Mary and Ola. So I guess we find out what happens in six years from uh, the change architect. Okay, okay, then let's have a look at the change architect. A choice driven protest simulator. Is this time again? An apartment above a London street. You are a protest coordinator. You are the crowd's eyes and ears. You monitor the news, the police and the protesters from safety. Then you instruct individuals in nearby crowds using a secure messaging app. In the distance, several hundred thousand people protest throughout the capital. You are just inside Westminster, where the police are enforcing a no-go zone. And the High Court of Justice, at the centre of it all, Baron Sugar, is currently being handed a verdict. What? Like... What, like Alan Sugar? <laughs> Despite crystal clear evidence of election fraud, everyone is sure his party will be found innocent. If so, King Charles will ask him to form a government. If so, you're going to burn the fucking house down. The medics finished building the aid station outside. Nick of time, the crowds will be here any minute. Jemima and Addy. Just seeing those four officers down the way figure it out and raise you in. They know we're coming now. God damn, I'm shaking, buzzing. It's real. Yeah man, too real. This many people, they can't ignore us. Sugar will be gone this time tomorrow. Adir, 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 turns to observe you. And then? We keep pushing, demand complete reform. Adi smiles at you, a revolutionary. My aunt Ola's like that. Oh! Throw away everything and start again. But my other aunt, she spent time in Syria and Yemen, so she's more careful. Revolution, when a major portion of the country is opposed to it, really means civil war. Right now, Sugar's got most of the tabloid readership believing in him and only him. By this point, what could convince him otherwise? You hear the crowd draw near. Anyway, they're here. You clear your throat, shrugging off Addy's challenge. 
Oh. Messages from the nearby crowds outside begin to appear on the laptop screen. You type a greeting. Okay, I'm in contact. Red 5 standing by. Haha, <laughs> I get it. Hmm, there's counter protesters. Just came out the building on the far side of the road. Already? What the hell? I see two cricket bats. Some have England flags. Hmm, most are plain clothes and they're all in good shape. Maybe police? Ah shit, racist. How many? 20 or so. Stay cool. Fuck, what do you think we should do? Either tell our people to let them be or run them off. There aren't many, but they might cause trouble. Alright, we better clear those counter protesters away. Got it. Get those bats and flags. Make it known they can't be here. Fuck yeah, let's go! Sending them in. What's happening, Addy? They're about to be swarmed. Shit, one's getting some decent bats in. There's some fist fighting. A few of our people down. Blood on the floor. Shit, fuck. It's okay, the bastards are running off. Their way. Our people are getting taken to the aid tent. Nothing serious. You sure? Yeah, but the police are turning up. En masse, it looks like. They've formed a line. Shit, there's children in that crowd. Counter protesters are bad enough. Can we de-escalate? A mate says they've seen tanks in Piccadilly. Unlikely. Getting cray. Police are advancing. Batten's up. They're headed for the aid station. Oh Christ, they're gonna tear it apart. A cab, let's fuck them up. Difficult to say, but they're definitely headed for the medics. They mean business. We better keep them off the medics, right? What if things escalate and we've got no water, no bandages, etc? If we charge them, it's exactly the optics they want. Of course. Your hands tremble. Police are headed for the first aid tent. They're going to tear it apart. Shit. Is it worth the risk? Decide. Defend the aid tent. Ah, fuck it. Stop them. Protect aid station. The crowd outside roars forward to meet the advancing police. Sounds of a clash soon follow. Well, it's done the trick. Is it bad? No, they're just defending themselves, slowly backing up. A man just took a riot shield off one of the riot police. Pretty funny. Okay, they're in retreat. The crowd's emboldened though, giving chase. Okay, pull back now. I've told the crowd to let them go. Hmm, one's at the front, haven't got the message. Come on, cut it out, let them run away. Ah, shit. What? Oh shit, I can see on the TV. Yeah, they've taken an officer down. This is bad. You hear a deep metallic rumble approaching in the distance. What's that sound? That's the tank, isn't it? I told you. Large vehicle of some sort. Can't see them yet. It's tanks. They brought the military in. Someone in the chat seems to think it's military. Has anyone got eyes in the vehicle? What are they? Possibly. Military or just heavy police ordnance. It's bad news either way. Tanks. Jesus. What about the TV? What the fuck? The BBC just went off the air. Oh, jeez. Fuck, I didn't sign up for this shit. You quickly check other channels. Nothing is broadcasting. Behind us. Addy, there's nothing here. Nothing at all. Even on the satellite connection? No broadcast on any of the UK news channels. Jemima. Yeah? The tanks are outside. And those counter-protesters from earlier who we ran off, they're just behind the police line. Armed now. You were right. Yes. This is insane, Addy. The area's no good. I'll reroute the crowd back the other way. Addy turns his head to look back down the road. Fuck, we're kettled. What? What are we doing? For a while we were watching the tanks roll up. They drove a line through the march way back there. Everyone on this road is blocked in. Shit, I'm sorry Jem, I took my eye off the ball. Are we going forwards or back? So we're surrounded. No alleys to escape through. Addy takes a moment. We should keep moving forward. Not that I can see. Not without smashing up the shop fronts and taking, finding a way through the buildings. And we don't have floor, ground floor access on this side of the building. They can't get through here. Could march on, call them Elshie's Bluff, or charge backwards, hopefully break through the police and get away. Shit, they can't just sit there like ducks. We have to move now. Forward or back. Charge the police at the rear. I feel like going towards the tanks is bad. This is too heavy. We've got to get them out of there. Right, everyone, spread the message. You're going to charge backwards. We're getting you out. I missed that message. On it. Party time. Ready? You nod and begin to type. Now, charge the rear. You hear the raging chorus of protesters charge. Fuck. A hell of a thing to watch. Clamour of fists, bottles, bits of wood, anything protesters could find battering the police barrier fills the air. No good, if you're breaking through, but the police line back there is wall to wall solid. Suddenly, a roar is punctuated by serpentine fizzing. Police are gassing, a loose line of sight, I think. We're on it, we came prepared for this. I think someone down there has anti gas equipment. It's the medics, they're doing the traffic cone thing to neutralise canisters with water. Nice. Oh, the music changed. Not going to be enough though, I think that said. 
Oh, oh no. The world goes dark. The explosion rings in your ears. You slowly pick yourself up off the ground, surrounded by shards of glass. Addy? Yeah, here. Addy starts covered in cuts, shocked. They, they shot. They shot the tank. They fired. Help out here. You approach the window, you see that the road outside is thick with dust, it's difficult to see. Addy is shaking, you take him by the arm and help him up. Thank you. You try to take him to shelter behind the desk. No, we have to get away from the window. I'm fine. You take cover behind the desk. What the fuck do we do now? Get us out, please. Oh jeez, please tell my parents I love them. Ugh. Addy sputters at the dust from outside. We could try to tell people to get into the buildings. I'm so scared. Fuck, that won't be fast. They aren't going to fire those things near their own, right? I can't believe they did it. So what if they charge the tanks? Or at least charge the police in front of the tanks? Render them useless? This is it. I suppose, but there's a lot of people out there. They could just fire past the front line. Shit. We should be out there. Um... Break into the buildings. I can't ask them to face down tanks. Fuck that. Break into the shop fronts. Bring down whatever doors you can. Smash your way through. Get to the other side if you can, or get upstairs. Get safe. Get out the street. Okay. Fuck. Alright. I can't believe they fired. Tear the shutters off. It's done. You hear the sound of glass smashing. Metal clangs against the shutters. And Addy nods deep in thought. He pulls out his phone. Addy, are you okay? Addy thanks for a second. Then is stirred by the tank fire. Mobile internet is down. What? Check your phone. It's completely disconnected. No signal. Are you getting messages on the laptop? Are people getting these? I have the satellite connection, so the laptop's still connected. He goes for a moment, wait for a response, and our tank bursts outside. Error. Message could not be delivered to 20 sections of units. You're right, they're cut off. The tank's engines scream now directly below. They're, we're no use anymore. What's going on? There's still a lot of people in the street. Breaking through the buildings isn't going great. The police line's passing directly outside, just below us. Fuck, it's my fault. Hold on, there's no bodies. Nobody's been hit. There's some people being hit, but the medics have bandaged them. But I can't see anyone dead. The gun shots and tank fire. Tank <laughs> fire. Blanks? Maybe. There's holes in the tarmac though. I think they fired tanks at an empty road on purpose. There's barely any bloods. Has it all been for show? Maybe so far. Addy, it's over. Let's go home. There's nothing we can do now. Addy turns to you, shuddering with adrenaline. I'm going to climb down behind them. It isn't worth getting killed. It isn't worth getting killed. Let's go home. Strategize. Organize some other actions to take. Look outside. There's no better time than now. Right now. They're bluffing and they've gone way too far. We won't get another chance to turn people against them like this. Again. We can really nail them. We can't back off now. We just have to expose them. You ask yourself what Addy could mean and instantly you figure it out. The satellite and connect internet connection. Yes. The tanks, cannon shots continue. You want to film yourself standing up to them. I want you to film me standing up to them. You know the satellite link only works on the laptop, right? We have to use the laptop webcam. We consider them for a moment. Explain it to me. They're not gonna murder us, especially not you, while they're being broadcast. We start live streaming. I'll explain what's just happened. Then we climb down and challenge the line from behind, still rolling. People will see them firing on the crowd. People will see how they respond to us, whether with violence or intimidation. People will feel like they're in it, right here, as adrenaline wanes. I'm pretty sure they won't kill us. And unlike you, I don't get to walk away ever. No matter what I do, fighting shitheads like this will always be part of my life. Sugar's people won't be happy until me and everyone like me are all on the ground. And I can't walk away because we put those people down there. This could be huge, Jen, but we gotta do it now. He waits a moment. What do you say? Uh, I'll film from the window, get the whole thing. I can't go down there. I know I won't stop you. But I'll get the whole thing from up here. I should be able to film for longer, right? I do not understanding. Okay, let's do it. You pull out social media in the laptop, tag the movement's main account, and start streaming the webcam. You pick the laptop and awkwardly point at Addy, who removes a bit of tape over the camera. Good catch. He clears his throat and begins. I'm in Westminster. The military of fire just fire tank runs into the crowds of peaceful protesters. They began by provoking the crowd with officers as guided counter protesters in order to justice force against us. 
In response, police needlessly charged a first aid tank, and when we defended it, this again justified escalation to them. They blocked off the crowd's exit and rolled up in tanks ahead of us. When people tried to escape, we beat them, cut off the TV networks and the mobile signal, and then they opened fire with the tanks. The crowd tried to save themselves by escaping through boarded up shop fronts, but it was slow going and the tanks continued to fire. See for yourselves. He moved to the window and panned the camera across the carnage, and Addy climbs out onto the window ledge. Nimbly he shuffles down an old metal drain pipe, then drops himself to street level. He approaches the line from behind. He opens his arms wide to show the enemy he's no threat. They notice him and several turn their weapons to him, clearly terrified. He yells at them that the country will judge them for what's happened. A tank's turret begins to spin towards him, lines up. They pause for a moment, then they advance, tap onto the ground and pin him. As he's being arrested, he looks up at you. A soldier notices, follows his gaze and spots you, calling you out to his squad mates. You duck and run, manage and escape. Addy's Defiance helps spark weeks of protests in London, and is the second most run news clip in the following days, after Prime Minister Sugar's victory speech outside the High Court of Justice. Oh, but is there more in the series? Because I don't have any more than that. I need to know what happens. I need to look it up. I need to know. Is there more? The Sacrifices series. Games. The Change Architect is part of The Sacrifices, an experimental game series that visits, visits seven strangers just as the lights are about to change. Back the project and the other games here on Kickstarter. Currently three games are released. We'll be new episodes semi-regularly as part of our month game a month project which we're documenting over on Patreon. The games are free to access, pay what you want if you like what we make. Please consider give, providing us a tip to allow us creating more games. Oh, so there's going to be more! Oh, I need to know what happens! I'm really invested now! <laughs> but, I mean, they're alive for now! Oh, I really enjoyed that! But now I really need to know what happens next. Well, I will keep an eye on it, and who knows, maybe I'll be back in the future with more of this series. Um, but for now, thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed that little exploration of the Sacrifice series. Uh, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you in the next one! Bye-bye!